All right, today's just a quick video talking about some problem solving tips. This is one of the biggest things that I wanna make sure that you do throughout this year is learn how to solve problems symbolically. And what this means is don't use numbers. Even if you're given numbers, don't use numbers until the end. That's my advice and that's something I think by the end of the year you should be very comfortable doing. But sometimes you'll be given problems that you can't solve the traditional way. You can only solve it symbolically because they won't have given you any numbers. So for example, this is a problem that I'm looking at right now. We've got an object with a velocity v1 at the beginning, velocity v2 at the end, and acceleration, we'll just call it a1 in this case, and it travels a distance of d. In this case, we were given all of these, but let's say that uh, we were given the acceleration, the final velocity and the distance, but we wanted to know what was the initial velocity. This is considered an unknown in this case. That's our unknown, we know the other three. And we know them, but we don't know the numbers that they are. So just presume that either somebody else has them or they know somebody else could measure these and you wanna give them a formula that will let them calculate V1. Let's see how we can do that. So this is the equation that relates those four variables. Um, we're looking for the initial velocity. So we're gonna go ahead and just solve this equation for the initial velocity. First, take this, bring it over there. Then we'll take the square root of both sides. And this right here is a general equation that tells you the initial velocity if you know the final velocity, acceleration, and displacement. I mean, it's the same equation here, just rewritten. So it's not anything too complicated. It's just a little bit of algebra here, step to step. Now, the thing about this though, is this is not V1. This is just generally V0. If we wanted to figure out V1, we have to go in and replace all of these with their names in the problem. So here we go, here's our answer. We get that the initial velocity V1 is equal to V2 squared minus two A1 D. And that's all square root of all of that on that side. There it is, we've solved it symbolically. So if you gave this to a buddy who didn't know anything about math or physics, they were able to measure these three values, they could just plug it into this equation and get the initial velocity. This is a very powerful tool that lets you come up with equations for situations. Now, this is never an equation I would suggest you memorize because it's this equation. So you've already memorized that one and you can derive this very easily. Uh, but if there was ever a time you needed this and you had this equation already written down, you could use it multiple times. If I gave you 15 sets of data here, you wouldn't wanna to have to go through, plug in numbers ahead of time and solve it 15 times. You'd solve it this way, plug the numbers in, those times, then you're done. All right, hopefully you can see why this is useful and you will have to do it. So better start learning now.